I once heard it said that there are two types of darkness, the darkness of the grave and the darkness of the womb. A darkness that makes us feel like life must be something we must be far, far away from. And yet there is another darkness that is so beautiful and so crucial because it is the darkness we all came from. See, maybe hope is that thing that beats inside of us, reminding us that things won't always be this way, that it won't always be Friday, but even Friday is still good. See, maybe hope is that last ounce of resistance within us against every evil that would ever try to convince us that death had won for good. See, maybe hope is that voice that speaks to the grave and says, I beg your pardon, but have you met a man named Jesus who turns grave into gardens and with one prophetic stare would dare look out into this world and see sunflowers where there are skeletons, azaleas among the agony and roses within the rubble. See, maybe hope is that thing that beats inside of us, reminding us that at any given moment as God's beloved children, yes, we are the very roses within the rubble, the tulips alongside the trials and the trouble. And as long as you, as long as as we are still alive, still breathing, and still here, death doesn't get to have the last word, and neither does the pain or the fear, and not just in us, but within this whole world. Graves can become gardens because of the one named Jesus who says, I beg your pardon. And he extends his invitation for our participation in the newness of this creation because the grave is still empty. Yes, the grave is still empty. And the garden, the garden is in the making.
Hey, Sandals Church, man, it is so good to be here. My name is Jeff, I'm the online campus pastor. Wow, so many of you have decided to have this Easter experience right where you are. Sandals Church is one church, but made up of many locations, including our Sandals Church Anywhere locations. And here are some of them. Wow, look at our friends, look at our Sandals Church Anywhere family. I love it, I love it. They, they were some of our online attenders that decided to bring the Sandals Church experience to their home. These are some of our Sandals Church Anywhere hosts and folks from here in the United States and even internationally that we came alongside and resourced so that they can have a church experience right where they are. If you give financially to Sandals Church, then you make it possible for them and so many others to be able to bring the vision of Sandals Church, which is being real with ourselves, God, and others to places all over the globe. If you have never given and would like to give today, all you have to do is go to give.se or you can give on our Sandals Church app. Hey, I'm so glad that you all are here. I'm so glad that you all are there. Now let's jump into our Easter message with our lead pastor, Matt Brown. Hi guys, welcome to Easter at Sandals Church. Man, I am so glad that you are joining us. Easter is the most important day on our Christian calendar and it's the most important day in the history of the world. And today I wanna challenge you. I wanna challenge you. I don't know where you've come from, how long it's been since you've been to church. Maybe you've never been to church in your life and I just wanna welcome you. Maybe you're watching online for the first time. Today I wanna challenge you to believe in the hope of Jesus. So many of us were confused. You know, there's so many religions, so many ways. And we're like, I don't even know what God wants from me. Here's the amazing thing about our Christian God is he doesn't let us wonder. He just tells us. And this is what God says. Jesus told him, the only work God wants from you. God, what do you want from me? Jesus answers this question. He says, believe in the one he sent. That's it, just believe in Jesus. And that's what I wanna challenge you to do. But the problem is believing, let's be honest, it's hard. It's difficult. I mean, it seems like everybody's fake today, amen? I mean, I just, I just was watching the news this week. And man, there's so much needed in the area of social justice in our country. And it broke my heart to see that the, the, the leaders of BLM are being investigated. You see, on the way to social justice, they bought a mansion with your money. I mean, think about that. You know, I Googled my name this week, and let me tell you something, don't ever do that about yourself unless you're ready to just be insulted because the internet is not kind. But when you Google my name, when you Google Pastor Matt Brown, the first thing that Google throws up is, is what is his salary? Yeah, you wanna know what the answer is? Not enough, that's what the answer is. <laughs> but, but why are people Googling that? Because we don't trust people in authority. We don't trust people who run charities because we've been burned. We've been lied to. Man, our own president is under investigation for how he's fundraised. We see this time and time again, and it doesn't have to be a charity. It doesn't have to be a politician. Unfortunately, it's pastors, you know, telling you to sacrifice and driving, you know, a Rolls Royce, and that's wrong. But here's the thing. What we tend to do is, is we throw the baby out with the bathwater, and some of you are like, what does that mean? It means you threw too much out. The water's dirty, but the baby's good, and you gotta say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to believe? And some of you today, you believe in nothing. You're just done. It's all fake. It's not real. There's no God. But some of us, man, we've believed in someone. Our parents, a pastor, a priest, and we've been crushed. And I just want you to know, I, I am so sorry. I'm so, so sorry that ha that happened to you. But that doesn't mean Jesus is fake. It means the person who had the Jesus t-shirt, the Jesus tattoo, who had the Jesus cross or the Jesus guilt, it means they were fake. But some of us today, and I believe this with all my heart, some of us are ready to believe in Jesus and be saved. And that's what today is all about. Today is about an opportunity to change. But believing is hard, isn't it? It's hard to believe in someone. It's hard to believe in something. Jesus encounters a father who's hurting. His son is so sick. And Jesus just says, you just gotta believe and I'm gonna do a miracle. And the father instantly cried out, right? I believe, I believe. And then he got honest, help me 
overcome my unbelief. Man, here's the good news. God in heaven is gonna send his Holy Spirit and he's gonna help you believe today. He's gonna help you sort through what's real, what's fake, what's right, what's wrong. That's why Jesus calls him the spirit of truth. And he's gonna bring you the truth today. In the gospel of John, John wants us to know that we can believe in Jesus. You see, he's an eyewitness. His life was changed by Jesus. He described himself as the, as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He says, these things are written down. Why do we have the Bible? Why do we have the scriptures? So that you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and in the act of believing, listen to this, you will have real and eternal life in the way that he personally revealed it. Man, if you're tired of your life today, you're ready for Jesus. You're ready for Jesus. You see, this passage of scripture is written in the Bible. It's at the end of the gospel of John. At the end of the message today, I'm gonna give you a chance to believe. I'm, all I'm gonna do is ask that if you're ready to believe, in this real and eternal life, all I'm gonna ask you to do is to stand right where you are. I'm just gonna ask you to stand. You see, Jesus stood for you, you can stand for him. I'm gonna ask you to stand right where you are, right where you are and just say or shout. You determine the volume, but something's gotta come out. <laughs> That's what I, do, what I do when I do weddings. I say, look, when do you, something positive has to come out. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna ask that you do. Say, I believe, say, I believe in Jesus. You see, Jesus died publicly for us, publicly for us. And he asks you publicly to declare your faith in him. But here's the thing. Some of us would rather die than do anything in public, amen? You're like, nope, I'll just go to hell. Not, not, not gonna do that. <laughs> Look, God doesn't want you to go to hell. He sent Jesus so you could go to heaven. And let me just say this, it's okay to be nervous. I know I was nervous when I gave my life to Jesus, some of you will be terrified. Sometimes it's difficult to find the right words when things matter most. Amen, married men? <laughs> I get real nervous when we start sharing feelings. I mean, this is gonna go down in flames. One of my favorite movies of all time, don't judge me, I'm a sinner. It's Eight Mile with Eminem. He has a great song in that movie and it's called One Shot. Can I just be honest with you today? For some of you today, this is your one shot. This is your moment. This is your only opportunity. And we all lie to ourselves. We say, well, I'll get my life right with God when I'm older. You're not promised tomorrow. All you have is right now. So take it from Uncle Eminem, he's old now. <laughs> He's got an ugly just for men beard. I see it. I see it, Eminem. But you know what he challenges? He challenges us in that hit song to lose ourselves in the moment. I don't want you to lose yourself today in this moment. I want you to find yourself. I love the rap song, right? His palms are sweaty. His knees are weak. His arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom, spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface, he looks calm and ready. He opens his mouth, what? But the words won't come out. He's choking, how? Everybody's joking now. The clocks run out, time's up, over, blow. That's, that's what I love about rap, amen? I wish I could do that in my sermons. I just run out of word, I'm just like, blow. And everybody's like, amen, amen. Listen to what he says. You better lose yourself in the moment. You own it. Listen to this. You better never let it go. Why? You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. The opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Listen to this, now, now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the moment. And some of you are gonna blow it because you're more concerned with what everyone else thinks than your own soul. And my challenge today is that in this moment, you believe today. Don't walk away and lose your soul. See, I want you to be found today. 
I want you to be saved forever. You see, at the end of the message today, this will be your moment. This is the most important moment forever, forever. It's not just for this life, it's for eternal life. Listen to me, if the words come out and you believe in Jesus, the spirit will come in. Let's pray right now that nobody misses their moment, amen? amen? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray in the mighty, powerful name of the risen Jesus, that if there is one soul that needs to be saved today, that they would be saved, that they don't miss their moment. This is their moment to change their life. This is their moment for eternal life. This is their moment to believe. Holy Spirit, convict them of their sin and of the truth of the risen Jesus. Save souls today, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. In John 20, 19, it's one of my favorite stories. You know, I've been a pastor so long, I feel like I've already preached on this sermon. Look, the story never changes, people. Thank God it's the same story. It's a great story. John chapter 20, verse 19, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Isn't it amazing what fear does to our lives? You, the vision, see, the vision of Sandals Church is to be real. You, it's not your vision, but it is our vision. We don't live it, we just believe it, amen? <laughs> you see, let me just tell you the truth about you, the truth about me. We are all courageous until we actually need to be. Some of you guys, man, you're so brave on your couch. <laughs> like, like you, you're a warrior on your couch, right? criticizing athletes, it always amazes me. Some guy who hasn't ran in a decade, <laughs> criticizing one of the greatest athletes of all time who dropped a pass. And you're like, he dropped it. How could he drop it? He's a bum, get him out of here. Let me tell you why he dropped it. Because he's running <laughs> faster than you will ever run. And he's running from people who are faster than you will ever be. <laughs> and they are bigger than you and stronger than you. And if he catches it, they are going to legally assault him. <laughs> How many of you in here have dropped your phone and you're just walking? <laughs> Amen. Nobody was gonna tackle you. Okay. Why are they afraid? They just murdered Jesus. You would have been afraid too. Because you know what you think when they kill someone like Jesus, if they can get him, what can they do to me? So they're afraid, doors locked. And suddenly Jesus is standing there among them. Whoa. And some of you are saying, I can't imagine. Well, one day you won't have to imagine. And it won't be Jesus standing in front of you. It will be you standing in front of Jesus. And it isn't Jesus who moved. You were eating your ice cream and then you weren't. <laughs> Boop, you're dead. <laughs> you see, he didn't go through the doors or you didn't just go through doors, you just went through the gates of heaven. So what does Jesus say to a bunch of scared guys in a locked room? Peace, peace, he said, as he spoke. He showed them the wounds in his hands at his side. Why would he do that? Because he didn't believe. I don't know if you know this, but like if you go to a funeral, you don't expect to see that guy at Starbucks three days later. That's not normal. The other day I was in the grocery store and ladies, I love you. Why do you send us men to the grocery store? I do not understand. This year, I'm just gonna start sending my wife to Home Depot for random tools. <laughs> This is always me in the grocery store. I'm just like, I know where nothing is. Well, that's not true. I know where the meat is and I know where the veggies are. That's it. Everything else is confusing to me. So I'm always asking the 15 year old who doesn't know where it is either, excuse me, excuse me. But I'm in the gym, excuse me, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the grocery store and I'm checking out and this guy says, excuse me, has anyone ever told you, you look like, and then you know what it is, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. I preached at Saddleback Church and somebody introduced me as Pastor Kevin Bacon. 
But you know, that's not what he said. He said, has anybody ever told you, you look like Matt Brown? Oh. I know, I made it. Woo -woo. <laughs> and it, it, it threw me, because nobody's ever said that before. I said, I am Matt Brown. <laughs> and he dropped his grocery, ah! He's like, ah! And the poor checkout girl's like, who are you? <laughs> so that's why Jesus is like, you know, they're like, has anyone ever told you you look like Jesus? He's like, yeah, go ahead and touch. It's me, it's me, it's me, right? You see, he's reassuring them because this doesn't happen. So now they're filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And again, he said, peace. He said, as the father sent me, so I'm sending you. And then he breathed on them and said, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. You see, God doesn't want you to live this life alone. You were made for God by God. And if you receive God today through Jesus, he will send you his spirit and your life will never be the same. Listen, as he said, if you forgive anyone's sins, they're forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You see, Jesus doesn't just give us burdens. He gives us authority and power. But right, there's somebody that always misses. It's always me. Like I'm always the one looking the wrong way when something happens. And one of the, the disciples named Thomas, nicknamed the twin, apparently he's a twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. And they told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, I will not believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. And I put my fingers into them. That's gross, <laughs> but real. You know what he's saying? I saw him die. Now listen to me, Thomas is not a coward. He gets a bad rap. He's one of the bravest disciples. He's the one who said, let's go to Jerusalem and die with Jesus. He says, I know he died. I saw it. I saw it. And some of you today, you come from the Muslim faith. And many Muslims believe that Jesus didn't really die. He just looked like he died. Let me tell you something. He really died. The Romans were excellent at murder. And they made sure they stabbed his heart. That usually works, amen? <laughs> Just to be sure, stab into the heart. Thomas says, I'm not gonna believe. You wanna know why? Crucified, stabbed in the heart, guys. Don't walk around later. But eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. And let me just tell you this, some of you are hiding from God, you're locking your doors, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. God doesn't look at your heart like, it's locked, hmm. <laughs> well, we'll come back later. No, the Lord walks where he walks because he's the one who walks on water and he can walk through doors and he can walk into your life right now if you just invite him. As before, Jesus was standing among him. Peace. And then he said to Thomas, hey, you remember that, that big speech you gave? Anybody give good speeches when nobody's around? <laughs> like I'm always braver when my wife's not around. Like, af like after the argument, I have the post argument discussion. <laughs> you know what I was gonna say? And then I said, and she's like, what? I was like, I was just saying how much I love you. I was just saying, love you. Peace, <laughs> right? So G isn't it interesting that Jesus hears your private conversations? Can I just tell you this? Jesus says your words will condemn you or today your words can save you. You choose, you choose. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger right here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound by my side. It's a gaping hole. Some of you think you have a broken heart. Jesus has a stabbed heart because he loved you. He said, don't be faithless any longer. That's God's challenge to you today. I, I know people are fake. I, I know pastors are hypocrites. I know some people are just after your money, but that doesn't mean Jesus isn't real. And don't you dare let some hypocrite keep you out of heaven. Don't be faithless any longer. Don't believe.
believe. And what did Thomas say? My Lord and my God. Thomas exclaimed. He didn't just say it. He didn't whisper it. He shouted it. And Jesus told him, he said, you believe because you've seen me. But blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Some of you, you will never see Jesus, but you're blessed. And God is gonna bless you today with faith. Maybe not to see, but to hear and to answer. But why, why faith? Why doesn't God just crack open the heavens and just say, boo? <laughs> or maybe like, and then blah, and we're like, wah. <laughs> there goes mom's spaghetti, right? <laughs> Here's why. It takes away your choice. Do you know what love demands? Choice. Hebrews eleven six, 6, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and rewards those who sincerely seek him. You may not see Jesus today, but you will definitely hear him. And he's calling your name, your name. He's calling you to believe. You see, some of us, we think just in terms of eternity, but there are other blessings to believing. You see, believing in Jesus will give me four things. And I just wanna run through these today. Believing in Jesus gives me the hope I need for the certain death I'll face. Man, we have all become aware in the last couple of years of death, amen? You know, two Easter's ago, I preached to an empty room, not a person in the room. Even the cameraman was wearing a mask. I was talking to Darth Vader. And here's what I was really worried about while I was preaching to you. My daughter was at home with 104 fever and hallucinating. I was scared to death. This is right at the beginning of COVID and we didn't know anything about it. I was scared that I would lose my daughter and I came and preached to you about life. It's the most real sermon I've ever preached. Don't go back and look at it. I think I was a little angry. <laughs> I'm happier now. <laughs> but we've all become personally aware of death. Some of us lost loved ones. Some of us who are here thought we were gonna die, amen? Do you know the Bible says, are any, is there any, anyone among you sick? You're dying? Let them call the elders of the church. Did you know that I did that? I called the elders of our church to pray over me. I thought I was done. Man, COVID has made death very real. Here's the thing you need to know. No one in this room, no one's listening. No one's getting out of this world alive. You're all gonna die. It's gonna happen. COVID has simply reminded us we're not as strong as we thought. You know, I've prayed with children in our church the last couple of weeks, eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds who are terrified of death. That's because they've grown up in a culture that's worried about dying, but they've not heard anything about life. They've heard nothing about Jesus. None of us are gonna make it out of this world alive, but we can all have eternal life. Amen. First John five thirteen says this, I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God, listen to this, that you may know you have eternal life. You see, what Easter tells us is there's hope in the face of certain death. Jesus was dead, but now he's alive. And you can have that same confidence, that same confidence. When the doctor says there's nothing else we can do, you know there's something Jesus did. You know, you know, and you believe. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live. Listen to this, even though they die. You see, if you believe in Jesus, you will be just like Jesus. You will die and you will rise. That's the power that Jesus has. Do you know the last book in the Bible is called Revelation? Everybody's scared of it. I actually think it's quite comforting because it tells us who wins. <laughs> Listen to Revelation chapter one, verse 18. He says, I am the living one. I died, but look. I am alive forever and ever. And then he shows him something. He says, I hold the keys of death and the grave. 
You want to live forever? There's one guy with the keys. And his name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's Jesus. You see, believing in Jesus gives me hope in the face of certain death. You will die, but with Jesus, you can live forever. But here's something, some of you are like, well, I'm not gonna die for years. Yeah, but you're gonna be scared to death today. Believing in Jesus gives me the peace of God for my anxiety and fear. I mean, people are terrified still. How many of you have seen somebody wearing a mask, walking alone? I was like, the only breath that's bad is yours and you're smelling it. <laughs> like some of you are scared to death. Do you know what kills COVID? Outside, outside, it dies. And you're just sucking bacteria. But do you know what attacks us? Anxiety and fear. Anybody knows the theme? Every time Jesus shows up, he's like, peace. Yeah. You wanna know why? You don't have it. You don't have it. You're all chanting and oming and yoguing, and you don't have it. It's not working. Tammy and I were out to dinner. And the people next to us were talking, which means we were listening to, <laughs> to what they were saying, right? Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> it's so embarrassing, but it's so true. But the guy next to us was a doctor and he was talking, I think, to his father. His mother was in the hospital and here's what he was telling his dad. He said, the thing that breaks my heart about COVID is not all the people who died of COVID. It's all the people who died because they were afraid to go to the hospital. That's, isn't that amazing? We're afraid to go to the hospital because we might die, so we do die. That's what fear does. Fear doesn't just rob you of life, it ushers you right into death. Jesus wants to heal your anxiety and fear. Listen to what he says, peace be with you. He didn't say peace to me. And he had a rough weekend, amen? <laughs> he says, peace be with you. And then he showed them the wounds in his hands and at his side. And then they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. You see, Jesus doesn't just offer peace, he gives it. Again, he said, peace be with you. Man, do you have peace today? Are, are, are you at peace? Listen to what Jesus says in John 14, 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is, is the peace the world cannot give. Stop watching the news and listen to the good news. There's a different set of peace. I mean, my God, we've been through everything, amen? A pandemic, racism, violence, an election nightmare, and now Putin. You don't have to be troubled or afraid. Not today, Putin, not today. Man, Jesus wants to give you that peace. He wants to give you that peace. The number one disease in America today is anxiety. And the number one problem today is we've lost our faith. Some of you are looking to the news for hope. I got news for you. It's always bad news. Every morning I wake up, my wife turns that on. I'm like, why? Who got shot? Who died? You know how the car chase ends, it's never good. <laughs> Believing in Jesus though, listen to me, gives me power to face everything the world throws at me. Everything. Moms, those toddlers you have, they're getting up tomorrow. Fired up, <laughs> fired up, 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> what can I destroy today, right? You think that jerk at work, you think he's gonna chill out on Monday morning? No, 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 he's fired up. You think people on the freeway, oh, well, well, come on in. No, 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 they're fired up. Man, the world is gonna be there tomorrow. Are you gonna be ready for it? 
Listen to what Jesus says. And who can win this battle against the world? Who? Only those that believe that Jesus is the son of God. Those are the only ones who win. Everyone else loses. That's why the world's so angry. They're losing. They're losing. And here's what's sad. The earth is rooting against them. Mother earth, she hates you. She hates you. You are a tick on her back. She can't scratch, but the Lord will. Bink. Yeah. Rapture. Boop. John 20, 31. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and that by believing in him, you, you, circle that, you will have life by the power of his name. Some of you are missing out on the power. You know, my wife and I, we bought a coffee pot and a Keurig together because we're efficient people and it wouldn't work. So we took it back. We got another one, same problem. We realized we hadn't plugged it in. Some of you, you're laughing at me. You wanna know why your life don't work? You're not plugged in. You are out of juice. You have no power. You're like, Lord, these toddlers you gave me. He's like, I can help. I've been crucified. I can deal with them. <laughs> Lord, my marriage. Jesus is like, I'm married to the church. You want to talk problems? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have you seen my wife? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right? Ephesians 1, 19 through 20. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. One of the things you're gonna see on judgment day is all the power you could have had. This year we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of when I saw God raise a child from the dead. Right in front of me. I'll never forget it. I was in Vietnam 10 years ago. I was on a medical mission trip. And some of our surgical team did a cleft palate surgery on a little toddler. And something went tragically wrong when they took the, air, the, the tube out of his airway to bring him back. His airway swelled and closed. He instantly coded and basically was dead for hours but the doctors worked him and worked him and continued to work him. And here's why, they're good people and they didn't wanna to go to jail. We were in a communist country and we just killed the kid on accident. It was scary. This went on for hours and hours and hours until the lead medical doctor said, we're not calling the kid dead until we pray. The kid was still in the OR, too sick to move. State-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art doctors, anesthesiologists, nurses. He had the best care in the world and he was lifeless. I had to walk past his family as I walked through the waiting room into the surgery room. I had to scrub in like a doctor. And I walked into the room and it was chaos and there was this big doctor from Texas and he was angry and he was screaming out. He said, just call it, the kid is dead. You see, what I didn't know is the kid had been lifeless for over eight hours. Wow. He was lying naked on a table. And Dr. Viendone, who goes to our church, looked at me and he said, Pastor, we're not calling it until you pray. And so I went to pray and all the doctors started walking. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you guys going? He said, we're praying together. And I had all the doctors, surgeons, hold hands, hold hands, hold hands. <laughs> and we prayed. And I put my hands over a lifeless cold body. And here's what I said. Jesus, we did this. I need you to fix this. We meant to help, but we hurt him. We meant to save him. And I think we killed him. I have never been more scared in my life. 
I said, in the name of the risen Jesus, heal this baby boy. And I said, amen. And his little wiener went, beep. <laughs> True story. My wife hates that I say that. And he peed. <laughs> and I jumped back. I looked at the doctor and he said, it's a miracle. <laughs> and he opened his eyes and he cried. He took a breath. He was in the doctor's arms. And an hour later, he was in his mother's arms with no brain damage at all. My wife says, why you gotta say the penis thing? Cause it happened. That's how it happened. That's what God does, man. Let me, let me ask, what would happen if you asked the risen Jesus to pray over your finances? What would happen if you asked the risen Jesus to pray over your marriage? What would happen if you asked the risen Jesus to pray over your teenager? Teenagers, what would happen if you asked the risen Jesus to pray over your parents? What would happen in our church if we said, risen Jesus, move in this place? This is what the Bible says, the same mighty power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand is the same power that's in you if you believe. But it's not in you unless you believe. But man, it gets even better. Believing in Jesus gives me something that you can find nowhere else. Believing in Jesus gives me the mission of God that I was made for. Are you bored with life? I think you are. You tired of video games? You tired of Netflix? I could live and die and never watch Netflix again. Some of you are like, wow, well, Christianity is boring. You know why you think it's boring? Because you've never actually tried it. Following Jesus is never boring. Never boring. There's a guy in my neighborhood. The Holy Spirit said, you need to lead him to Christ. I found out he's mentally ill and violent. I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you couldn't give me like the mom with toddlers? <laughs> the Lord's like, you don't like boring. I want to spice up your life. <laughs> That's what Jesus does. But you know what's boring? Following anything and anyone else other than Jesus. Can you imagine being a disciple? What, what are we gonna do today? Whose eyes are we spitting in? Like, right, like, <laughs> what, what are we doing today, Lord? But all of us fall in love of one of three things or all of these things, fortune, fame, or fantasy. You know, the most popular movie last year or show on Netflix was Squid Game. And if you didn't watch it, you didn't miss it. It's gross, it's terrible, I'm not recommending it. And some of you, because you're sinners, you're like, now I have to watch it. <laughs> but Squid Game is about a bunch of rich people who are so rich, they're bored with their life, so they ruin other people's lives for money. Literally. They play games with people's lives. That's what wealth does to people, it ruins you. It doesn't save you. When's the last time you saw a commercial that said, I won the lottery and my life got better? <laughs> but some of you are like, well, I don't care about money. Oh, but you care about fame. The number one desired occupation amongst young people today is to be an influencer. Oh, if I just was famous. One of my favorite actors and comedians of all time is Jim Carrey. And here's what he said. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see it's not the answer. You know what Jim Carrey says? Fame and fortune have destroyed him and it will destroy you. Stop praying for it. You might get it. But man, there's this whole nother category. You're so bored with reality, you live for fantasy. You heard of the metaverse? Yeah, metaverse, same as the second, first verse, right? It's boring, it's lame. People in the metaverse aren't any better. They're just as broken. 
Because they're people. My little avatar punches your avatar. Now we have to have, you know, metaverse police. Stop that. Because we're broken. But some of you aren't into the metaverse. Some of you are addicted to porn. You're addicted to fantasy. Anything but reality, right? Because reality's hard unless you believe in Jesus. There's a guy in the Bible who experienced every fantasy you could imagine. His name is King Solomon. He had so many wives, he didn't even know their names. He probably had him an assistant just with a list of names. You are, uh, I forgot. Literally thousands of women in his life. Here's what he said. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. He said, I refused my heart no pleasure. This is in the Bible. And Solomon, everything was meaningless. Look, you were not made for money. You were made to make a difference. You were not made for fame. You were designed for faith. Man, and you were not made for fantasy, but for reality and Jesus for eternity. First Timothy 1.16 says this, God had mercy on me so that through Christ Jesus, he could use me as a prime example of his great patience with what? Even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. You see, here's the beauty of the risen Jesus. He can take your messed up, worthless life and turn it into something that not only changes you, but changes others for eternal life. I was at the gym this week working out. This guy came up to me. He said, are you Pastor Matt? I said, yeah. He said, my name's Daniel. We've never met, but you saved my life. Now here's the truth. I can't save anybody's life. But Jesus used this pathetic version of a man and he saved me. He empowered me and he's used me in a way not to hurt people, but to help people and to heal people. And a grown man in a gym walks up and says, you have saved me. Let me ask you a question. You can't even save yourself. Who, who are you ever gonna save? What difference are you ever gonna make in life? On your own, you won't. With Jesus, you will have a front row ticket to resurrection. Front row, first class, upgraded. Or you can do it your way and continue to be bored. I mean, what does the world have to offer? Nothing. I don't even know who won an Oscar. I just know somebody got slapped. <laughs> Do you know anyone who won? I don't. You know why that is? You need to believe in something better. You need to believe in Jesus. And some of you are like, well, I do believe. Do you? James says this, you say you have faith for you believe that there's one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this. Do you have saving faith? Have you been saved? How do you know if you're saved? I'm gonna run through a couple of things and I just want you to ask yourself these questions. To be saved, I need to believe this, that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. Well, pastor, all religions are the same. They're not the same. You know what Hindus believe? They believe we're on a merry-go-round. You just switch which animal you are. But you just keep going round and round and round. That sounds like hell to me. Insect, bug, dog, you, bug, right? Buddhism's similar, but at least you can get off the ride. It's called nirvana, which means you just, pff, you're, not, you're done. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam believe something very different. Like Eminem, they believe you get one shot. Hebrews 9.27 says this, just as it is appointed for a man to die once, and after that does not come reincarnation, does not come nirvana, comes judgment. Here's what makes Christianity unique from Judaism and Islam. For the Jew, the best they can hope for is that God is pleased with how well they've lived their life. And the same is for the Muslim. They're hoping they've done enough. As Christians, we don't hope in ourselves. We hope in Jesus. Yeah. Romans 6.23 says this, for the wages of sin is death. 
whatever sin that's in your life, it's just like cancer. In the end, it leads to death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. That's what it is. So I need to believe I'm a sinner who needs to be saved. I need to believe that Jesus died for my sins on the cross. Good Friday is only good if you know Jesus. But Jesus didn't just die. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. And you got to believe that. You got to know that. He isn't dead. He's alive today and he wants you to be alive with him forever. And here's what the Gospel of John says. We got to believe that Jesus is the son of God. He's not you. He's not me. He's God's one and only son and he gave his life for you. And then lastly, I'm ready to live my life for the risen Jesus. You see, the devil believes in Jesus and is afraid. I wanna challenge you to believe in Jesus and come to faith. The devil won't repent, will you? Because you believe today, I'm gonna challenge you to do two things. Anybody who believes in Jesus should be willing to stand for Jesus. He stood for you, you should stand for him. Colossians 1.23 says, but you must continue to believe in this truth. Listen to this, and stand firmly in it. Some of you believed at one time, you believed as a child, but you've walked away, fallen away, drifted away. Now's your moment to come back. This is your moment, don't lose it, don't miss it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. So if I believe, I should be willing to stand. And because I believe, I should be willing to confess that I believe. Romans 10, nine says this, if you openly declare, not a private, quiet prayer, but an open one. God doesn't want any closet Christians. He died publicly on a cross for you. You should be able to proclaim your faith for him publicly. If you openly declare, if you openly declare that Jesus is the Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, listen to this, you will be saved. Your words will condemn you on judgment day or save you today. In just a second, I'm gonna ask you to stand wherever you are, at whatever campus you're at, even if you're watching at home and sandals anywhere. Even if you're a kid today, you're eight, nine, 10 years old, stand up in front of your parents and say, I believe, I believe. Shout it so we can hear it. Look, I've stood up here this whole time being funny. This is the best I got. <laughs> you can at least say one or two words. You can stand and say you believe. And let me tell you this, you're not alone. You're surrounded by believers. Yes. And we're here today and we're ready to cheer you on. And let me tell you something, it's not just us today. There are angels in heaven that are like, is he gonna do it? Is she gonna do it? And they're waiting and they're ready to party for you. Amen. But like Eminem, <laughs> you're nervous. Your palms are sweaty. <laughs> I hope you don't vomit your mom's spaghetti. But you know, you should be nervous. This is the biggest decision of your life. Whenever I do weddings, I always tell couples, it's okay to be nervous, you should be. 26 years ago, listen to me, I stood before my family, friends, and God, and I said I love Tammy. Do you wanna know why? Because I believe she was the one for me. You see, we stand and declare things that we believe. You see, standing matters, it matters. We shout for the things, right, we love. One of my favorite movies at Christmas is Elf, when Buddy falls in love. He says, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows. That's what love does. Jesus died on the cross, and he said, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows, I love you. He died for you, declaring, declaring it publicly, and it matters. Remember what Jesus said to Thomas? Don't be faithless any longer. And what did Thomas do? My Lord and my God, Thomas explained, exclaimed, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. All I'm gonna ask you to do is to stand in just a second, wherever you are, just stand and know that we love you, know that God loves you and just say, I believe. Some of you will have the confidence to shout it, but you gotta say it. I believe in Jesus, this is your moment right now, right here. And as soon as you stand, I'm gonna wait for just a second and then I'm gonna pray the Holy Spirit over you. 
as you believe in Jesus, I'm gonna pray the Holy Spirit in. So is there anybody here today that wants to stand right now, whatever campus you're at, wherever you're watching, would you just stand right now if you believe and say, I believe in Jesus, let's do it right now. Is there anybody? This is your moment right now. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Look, we love you. We love you. Come on, clap and cheer for him. Man, is there anybody else? I just wanna wait just one more sec. I know it's, it's a long sermon, but not as long as eternity. Why are you guys laughing? Anybody else? Man, I want all of Sandals Church everywhere. Would you just extend a hand as we pray as a church over these people, our brothers and sisters in faith? We just pray over them. Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the risen name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help them to know that if they believed, they are forgiven. Their sins are washed away as far as the East is from the West. There is no judgment. And because they stood for you, you will stand before for them on the day of judgment and they are completely forgiven. And they are now today a child of God. Lord Jesus, as you promised, would you send your Holy Spirit to fill them with power and strength and giftedness to live out their new and awesome life. Strengthen them and encourage them. Empower them, we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.
Hey, if you stood up and you said, I believe, then man, we want to know about, I yeah. want to know about. You can email me personally at pastorjeff at stainlesschurch.com or you can even text me. I will respond. We want to help you take this next step with your life with Jesus. Hey, I, I have my friend here. His yes. name is Taylor. He's our online youth lead. Come on now. You Let's look go. like a youth lead. Come I, on. I hope so. I, but, 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 but that's good. Time. But that's a good thing. Hey, Taylor, tell us a little bit what's going on in the online youth world. Yes. Uh, as we just talked about Easter yeah. Sunday, we had all of these people give their lives to Jesus, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. But we also so have awesome. amazing things happening right. in our online youth ministry. Yeah. Uh, one student in particular, he's a Muslim student. Can't mm. say his name because okay. yep. he's actually not allowed to wow. learn about Jesus, wow. read the Bible or anything. So mm. we actually exchange text messages every day. Um, I wow. share scripture with him, Come on encourage him, pray for him. And wow. then we also um, just answer questions about so Jesus. Cool. Honestly, so cool. it's super cool. Man. I'm excited to share more about as his life changes as awesome. we disciple him. So Man, that is awesome. Come so on cool. now. I love that impactful story. Yeah. Okay. You're the youth lead. Yes. And that means you probably play a lot of games. We play games. And you have a sure. game for us. Yes. So, so, so what's going on? Lead us brother. All right. So <laughs> we are playing a game today called okay. Would You Rather. Some of you may know uh, it. Some of you may you not. Rather. I don't on. know. Have you ever played oh, a Would You Rather? Would uh, yeah, you rather? yeah. Like back in the, uh, when yeah. I was young. Yes. I used to play. All right. So we're going to play a little game. It goes, it's as simple as this. Okay. You just get two hard questions. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then well, I'm going to have, or are you? Well, I'm going to give the questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. And then okay. you're going to answer and I'm gonna you're going to tell best. you why, but we want to hear your answers as well in let the chat. We would let love that as well. So let's get okay. first question. What do we got? Would you rather have the ability to see 10 minutes into the future <laughs> or 150 on, years into the future? Oh, wow. What do you got, Jeff? Come on. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, back in the day, it used to be a Trekkie. Um, uh, don't, don't, come on, be nice. Uh, but I would probably <laughs> say, that's so crazy. I probably go at 10 minutes because 150 years, that can't that's a really, lot of time. that doesn't really affect your life like yeah. right now. That's but true. if I can see like 10 minutes in the future, oh, I know what you're about to do um, for 10 my kids. minutes or my ten, kids. 10 years ten, or 10 minutes. 10 minutes. No, me 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 10 minutes. minutes. Because I want to know what my kids are about minutes. to do before they do it. That's fair. That's fair. Right. I'd Come say, on. honestly, I'm the opposite. Oh, 150 really? years. Oh, wow. Because okay. then you like know what's coming in the future. Right. Like flying cars, right? Are there going to be flying cars yet? We need to know. These are the important questions. I got questions. you, I got you, I got you. Are we gonna be able to time travel? Right, yeah, exactly. It's but, but what can you do with that? But just know, right? Just know, it's the okay. knowledge. It'll, it'll, and being able to set everybody else up for okay. success. Okay, all right, praise the Lord, you know? look at you. You're a good guy, you I'm guy. a giver, you know? Okay, okay. All right. Next, Next question, one. next one. Would you rather be forced to sing along or dance to every single song you hear? I'm interested oh, to hear this yours. Is because, oh, this yeah? is easy for me, <laughs> come on. Dance to every song yeah. that I hear. Come on now, dance. You know I like to dance. Come on, somebody. For me, it's dance. Okay. Dance. I would sing for you sure. Would sing? We're right. Can you sing? No, uh, you don't. Come on, uh, no, let no, no, no. You don't want to hear know. me sing, but on, if bless I had them. to, I would rather sing the bless dance. Bless them, Taylor. No, no, no. We're, I we're did gonna, a little dance move. Gonna, come on. I'll, I'll do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, all right. We want to hear your answer, though. Answer. Yeah, come on, let yeah. us know. Let us know. Uh, next question is, and this is our final one. Okay. Is, would you rather swim in a pool full of Nutella gotcha. or a pool full of maple syrup? First of all, how could you swim in either of those? <laughs> that seems to be impossible. It's pretty insane. Wow. Okay, I would probably that's a hot mess. Yeah. Um, I would probably say that's tough. Uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup? Because I could probably get through a little bit more through maple syrup. Because yeah. I'm trying to swim to get out. You know, I'm I'm swimming to get out. <laughs> you want out, you don't want to I can't get out of Nutella. <laughs> Who can't get out of Nutella? Yeah. And, and some people are like, oh, I like being in here. And they be more eating than, than swimming. <laughs> what about you? What about I you? I would probably choose maple syrup too. Okay, you know? all right, like, good job. Maybe make good some job. pancakes. You know, we agree swim, on that one. Swim. We agree. We agree on that one. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I'm, awesome. I'm kind of like a pancake. You know, yeah. I look like a pancake. Come yeah. on. Now. You look like the butter. There you go. There you go. There, there it is, right there. <laughs> yeah. We had fun playing this game, though. I love right? it. So. I love it. Hey guys. Hey. So glad you're here uh, with us for this Easter service. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a great week, and yeah. make sure you to come back next weekend for another powerful service. Yes. We'll see you next we'll time. We'll see you next time.